What ever happened to the Toy to Life games? Well, they milked it to death and the market became oversaturated. The end. I'm just kidding. I mean, that is kind of what happened, but let me back up a bit. So it all started back in 2010, or was it 2011? Well, anyway, uh, Activision released the game Skylander Spyro's Adventure. This was kind of Activision's way of bringing back Spyro. Not really the game people were looking for, but it was a whole different concept that worked. So what it was was the game came with a portal, which kind of works like a controller. You plug it into your system, and then it came with... Uh, three figures, not these three in particular, but uh, three figures which you would put them <clears throat> what the heck is it? you'd put them on this portal and then it would scan them into the game. So like I said they started with three and then you'd find others over time and it was actually a neat little concept. Um, <laughs> of course it's um, there's tons of these characters. There's eight elements and I think there was four characters per element. I got, I think I bought, got like maybe 24 out of the 32 or something. I was like, I'm not buying them all, but anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so, the uh, the plot was actually pretty ingenious too. The villain Chaos, voiced by Richard Horvitz, who's most known for his voiceovers like Zim and Invader Zim, um, Daggett and Angry Beavers, and Alpha 5 in Power Rangers. But uh, anyway, so, throughout the... Um, the game, you find like these, there's hidden areas which you can only gain access through, through like, like you'll be like, oh, you, you can only open this door if you have a fire character, so it's like, oh, no, I gotta go buy a fire character, or you find, one of the things you can find, um, you know, bonus things, is like these little, whatchamacallit, um, like trailers that gives you like an idea of like, different characters, so then it's like, oh, that character looks awesome, I have to go out and buy them now, you know. It worked. <laughs> um, and so overall, yeah, this game was pretty much like a dungeon crawler type of game too. And the music was really good. The game, it was almost like a cross between Cameo and Gauntlet. And um, like I said, I only have like 24 characters, I think it was. I didn't stop and count. But uh, my favorites would have to be Gil Grunt, Stealth Elf, Igniter, and Chop Chop. Which, um, Gilgrunt kind of always made me think of, like, um, he's actually one of the characters that came bungled with the system. Um, because it came with three. It was the game, the portal, and two, three characters. Um, but Gilgrunt always reminded me of Battle Beast. This little toys from, like, the... They actually came out around the time I was born. But, you know, going into the early 90s, my brother and our cousin, who were a lot older, well, six years to be exact, um, they had a lot of them, so that's kind of how I interested, introduced them at that age. And then, uh, Stealth Elf is a ninja elf, which is cool. Um, <laughs> Igniter is like a embodiment of flames that's possessed a suit of armor. And Chop Chop always reminded me of um, a boss from... What the hell was that game called? Uh, Golden Axe Revenge of Death Adder. It was the only Golden Axe game to never be released on a home console. And go figure, it's the best one. So really the only way to play it is on um, like emulators or by the original cabinet. You know, which, you know, <laughs> Sega loves making all these Genesis collections. They really ought to make a collection for their arcade games, but I'm getting off topic. So, like I said, overall, Skylanders was a really neat game. But then, of course, because it's Activision, they had to milk it to death. So they made a sequel um, the following year um, with new characters. Um, unfortunately, they were, characters were backwards compatible. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of new characters, but there was some... Um, and they kept it interesting with, like, you know, well, every year they made a new game, which, like I said, of course, this is Activision we're talking about. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, every year they made a new game, um, but they came up with, like, a new gimmick for each one to kind of keep it interesting. Like, the second game had bigger figures, the third one had ones where you could swap their bodies. I played through halfway the second game, then the third one, which was called, uh, Swap Force, I believe, or something like that. Um, that one I, I was pl planning to get, but I never did, and after that I kind of started losing interest in this whole thing, but, um, because, like I said, they were milking it to death. And then, of course, other companies started to jump in on it. You know, there was the Disney Infinity Games, which I never played, but I believe a friend of mine had them. Like, actually, I think he had a lot of these games, the Toy to Life games. And, um, yeah, he, um, 
Or what was I going to... But uh, Disney Infinity was kind of the same idea as Skylanders. It was like, you know, dungeon crawler type game, just with Disney characters. And then they would add characters from Marvel and Star Wars. Um... <clears throat> I remember there was also, like, a number of cheap knockoff ones that were just, like, these pl simple little plug-and-play systems. Uh, eventually, Nintendo kind of joined it with uh, Amiibos. You know, this, they kind of went with their own little thing, like, you know, just... These more just, like, unlock bonus content and games. I still think they should make, like, their own little dungeon crawler type game, but even though this market's kind of dead, but... Whatever. Um, <laughs> no Nintendo now, they probably would do something like that with the market being dead. But, um, you know, then there was the Lego Dimensions, which... The only reason I never really got that, as much as I love Legos, I was like, well, there was two reasons, actually. One, Lego games don't hold as much interest for me as they used to. And the other thing is because part of that, the whole Lego Dimension thing was buying, like, actual minifigures and like, car things and stuff, it's like, I already have so many other Lego stuff that it's just, it would add so much to it, um, but it, it was, like, from what I, um, from what I know of the Lego Dimensions, that did seem like a pretty cool idea, because you had characters from so many different franchises, like, uh, Gremlins, Beetlejuice, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Powerpuff Girls, the stupid remake one, Back to the Future, and so many more, um, unfortunately, you know, and then, by, like, the mid-2010s, this whole concept was really starting to lose steam because, like I said, for one thing, you have these companies that are milking it to death. Like, you don't have to make a new one every year, but I guess, you know, kind of kind of keep it fresh, so to speak. Otherwise, people will lose interest, even though... But either, they lose interest either way if, like, you know, well, you know, whether they keep doing do one every year or they do one every other year, then people would probably lose interest. Um, so it's kind of a lose-lose situation, so to speak. Um, but, yeah, and then... Yeah, the other thing was because, like I said, you had all these different ones, like, you know, there was Amiibos, there was Skylanders, the Disney characters, the um, Marvel, Star Wars, the whole Disney Infinity thing, and then, you know, Lego Dimensions, you know, the market was kind of oversaturated. Think, like, the 1983 video game crash, that was one of the things that caused the market to crash, because there was, like, I don't know, what, like, 20 different game consoles, maybe more, or something like that. I mean, that was before my time, but there's plenty of documentaries and articles and stuff out there. You know, it's a pretty interesting thing to to find out, learn about. Um, but yeah, I think that's, like, what happened was because the market was so just oversaturated because people were getting sick of buying a new game every year and just kind of fizzled out, which is unfortunate because it was, it was a great idea, like I said, but it, it like any gimmick, it did kind of get stale after a while. It's like when you buy, when you think back to, like, like, I mean, every Nintendo console had a gimmick and... Even, like, things for that. It's like, you know, you have fun with it for a while, but then it gets kind of boring, like... But, uh, yeah. So, that's just kind of my story on the whole toy-to-life market. Will it ever resurface in the future? Who knows? You know, with the whole Activision thing going on with Microsoft. Who knows? We'll see down the road. Maybe there will be another demand for these. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.